But what yeah. he looks for is faith. So, yeah, you might be dealing with sin. Or let's, let's face it, we're all dealing with sin. Yep. Okay, we all fall short of the glory of God. Yeah. Okay, whatever combination it is, how much or how little, doesn't matter. Because yeah. God doesn't consider that. Yeah. He considers your faith. Yeah. Now, what about my sin, Bob? But, but God has to look at my sin. Or oh, he did. Oh, he had a really good look at it. It happened mm-hmm. on the cross 2,000 years ago. Yeah. He targeted his own son with death because all your sin was put on him yeah. at the cross. And God came, God just targeted his own son and came at him with everything he had. And whoosh, yeah. he died. All right. And he paid the price for all of us. He saw all of my sin there, all your sin there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All that was past, present, and future. Your whole timeline is clean. Yeah. Okay. And that's the key thing. You must yeah. have a clean timeline for your whole life. And yeah. it's only possible by belief in the finished works of Jesus Christ, because that's the only thing yeah. God accepts. Yeah. Yep. You can't, I don't care how many times you say you're sorry. Yeah. I don't care how many works or things or throw ashes on your head mm-hmm. or try to go find a pure lamb. That'd be animal cruelty. You go to prison for that. It's the reason why you can't do that no more. <laughs> the only way that God gave us to him is through his son. This is why Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. Yeah. And nobody comes to the Father but through me. When you start thinking those thoughts and you're like, Lord, how can I get to know you a little bit better today? You focus on that during the day instead of the flesh because the flesh will shock your system. It will shock you. You'll wake up one day and you'll go, there's no way I thought I would ever do that because I was just sampling with something, smoking, whatever it is. I'll pick on the smokers for now. Drinking, I'll pick on those for now. Uh, How about eating a hamburger? I'll pick on myself for now. McDonald's, love McDonald's. Your flesh is designed to take you out. It'll it'll shock you. Oh, I thought I was only going to eat one Big Mac, but I ate three and beyond. And then a milkshake and then some fries and then whatever. And then I went to A&W. And now I'm like, now I can't move. Uh Mm Uh-oh, my heart's stopping. And the flesh is like, gotcha. Now you have a heart attack and you're done. You're no good to anybody now. That's the flesh. So if you start listening and paying attention to it, it's going to lead you down a path. And then somebody watching you will go, I'm so confused right now. I thought that person was saved. I don't understand. I thought they, they were a Christian. They were such a good person. How did they fall? How did they stumble? And all of a sudden end up sinning. Well, Mm -hmm. welcome to the human race. Welcome to the human race. Uh, Colossians 2.12 says, Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath also raised him from the dead. The faith of the operation of God. All right. So what's the operation of God in you? The Holy Spirit. You were born, sealed, and saved. Your spirit is born, sealed, and saved. But your flesh has yet to be dealt with because the rapture resurrection hasn't happened yet. So this operation of God continues. Grace is continued to be applied to the sins of our flesh. So we are all still in the midst of the operational phase of salvation. Our redemption, our complete redemption, has not come to pass yet for anybody in the body of Christ. After the resurrection and after we are caught up, this operation of salvation laid out in Colossians 2.12, which I just read to you, will then be complete. That goes to show you now that the person that says to you, man, I thought that guy was a Christian. Well, that guy is spiritually dead because Apostle Paul said we are spiritually dead in our trespasses and sins before Christ. Christ was the quickening spirit that brings your spirit back to life. Reverse it. So we are all dead spiritually mm-hmm. so that person has a dead spirit looking at you so not only is their body full of sin their spirit is dead and sinful okay so the spirit and body are full of sin but when we're saved 
our spirit is glorified like Christ and is now at the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. And your body is at the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. And we kind of shoot missiles at each other. We're at war with each other all the time. And in yeah. the middle of this warring spirit and flesh is your soul yeah. that has to essentially referee and pilot the both of them. Yeah. But now yeah. after your yeah. after your body dies, yeah. then your soul goes with your spirit. Yeah. And that's why people, when they had those near-death experiences, like, man, I feel incredible. I feel all this love. I feel so much peace. Why? Because you're no longer piloting that fleshly, sinful body. Yep. You are free from it. And you yep. say, do we have two minds? Yes, we absolutely do. We were given, the Bible says we were given the mind of Christ. When are yep. we given the mind of Christ? When the Holy Spirit regenerates our spirit man. Our spirit man has his own mind. Yep. It's a spirit mind, and I can't explain how that works. Yeah. But it's his own mind because when people have these near-death experiences and they leave their bodies, yeah. their spirit goes to heaven, all right, experiences all this stuff, and yeah. then returns to the body, all right? Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, you can remember all that stuff in heaven. Well, your your physical mind wasn't there. Your physical eyeballs were there sending messages to your physical brain, yeah. but yet you can remember everything. Why? It's yeah. because along with your physical mind, there's also a spiritual mind here as well. Yeah. The mind of Christ and the mind of sin, which is yeah. our physical body. I always like to tell John from uh, the watchdog. Yeah. And times like we always talk about rightly dividing your salvation. Yeah. You have body, soul, and spirit. You got, you have to understand those three parts. If you understand those three parts, uh, you have the soul that referees to both of them. Essentially it's the living experience for your body. And it's also the living experience for your spirit. Okay. Yeah. So it essentially is right in the middle. So your soul will compromise with your body to give you what your body wants. Like, yeah. for example, everything we've been talking about, all the sin stuff, eventually, you're, it's not your soul that's really in trouble, <laughs> yeah. you know, because the soul is just a living experience. I think people get that wrong. But the spirit, our yeah. spirit man, has been regenerated and quickened and sealed. Our soul also pilots that as well. And yeah. it's like I said, it's like that right in the middle. That yeah. soul is just right in the middle. Yeah. And it's just like this referee. Yeah. That it kind of like, yeah, I don't like what's going on in that flesh here. I love what's going on in the spirit here, but I can't help it. That sin is all around us all the time. We're getting pounded by it like all the time. Yeah. And it's hard. To mm -hmm. resist everything that's around us. Name whatever it is that you're having trouble with. Yeah. Okay. And I love those guys that say, oh, you shouldn't be doing that, Shane. Yeah, look at me. I'm not dealing with that. I was like, really? I, I love <laughs> it. I, I'm not sitting like, you know, okay, yeah. so so you're not dealing with uh you're not dealing with mm -hmm. overeating. Okay, you're not dealing with porn, you're not dealing with uh sex outside of marriage. Okay, all about gambling. Ooh. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, you, you hit like a nerve gambling. there now. Yeah. You like oh, gambling. No. The horse I haven't been to any horse races lately. Yeah. He's like, Well, well, that don't count. No, it, it counts. <laughs> you may not be dealing with all that stuff uh, or drugs. Yeah. How about drugs? Oh, yeah. you like drugs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I love people like that. I I'm yeah. great because I don't do that. I was like, Well, what about those drugs? Yeah. Well, uh that, yeah. that's different. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. And I, I feel like in my experience. Because I feel like I was like the worst sinner next to Paul. Paul feels like he was the worst. I feel like I was next, next in line to being the worst yeah. sinner on the planet. Um, we all do. Yeah, and and basically, it's like some people for some reason forget that, and it's almost like when you're the people that are the hardest on other people are usually the ones that are struggling with it. I'm not saying that all the time. Like if somebody says, Hey, you shouldn't watch porn. It could be because they've, maybe they've overcome that somewhere in their life and now they're victorious. So then they take that burden and they put it on someone that is struggling with it. And they go, you should be like me. I am now clean for 60 days now. Like, why can't you, be like me and they're like well what were you 61 days oh i was horrible i was a train wreck how about 90 <laughs> days oh i was even beyond that like so we get amnesia for selective amnesia once we get saved and once we overcome that addiction but the way i live is man that could happen to me any day 
pornography, smoking, overeating, gambling, any of those things could be like right here. This is the edge for me. And I'm mm -hmm. not a gambler, but it could be. You put me in the right environment for a long enough period of time. You throw me downtown Vegas for a month or a day or two by myself. You're setting me up for a failure. Like, mm -hmm. so why don't we just realize that any one of us, like the disciples, we're all sitting around at the dinner table with Jesus. And Jesus said, uh, just, I'm just kind of throwing this out to you guys. Uh, one of you is going to betray me. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you would think all fingers would point at Judas. But what happened was everyone was pointing at themselves and other people going, is it me? Is it him? Is it her? Is it them? Is it us? What? What? What's going on? Let me? You? Who? Mm -hmm. Who are you talking about? And Peter's elbowing the snot out of John, going, "Ask him, because I don't know if it's me." Mm -hmm. Ask him. Yep. So then John's what? like nestling in a little bit, going, "Uh, Jesus, uh, just give me a little hint. Who is it?" And Jesus, like the guy that I dipped this morsel of bread into this whatever it was sweet i think it was barbecue sauce or something i'm gonna give him that bread and he's the one that's gonna betray me and then judas himself said is it me and jesus like yep it's as you said so that tells me if the 12 disciples are going is it me that tells me i could be one of those guys that's hooked to porn hooked to drinking hooked to alcohol hooked to smoking a cigarette even though i have asthma I could be that person. I could be the guy that mm -hmm. eats out eats anyone when it comes to McDonald's. Like, so I have to be like, the only way for me to be really mindful of that is to acknowledge that I could be at that wall any day. So mm -hmm. instead I just run into his arms and try and keep the flesh into a coma. And then I have a chance today. Mm-hmm. And if I mess up, I fall down, I trip, I fall, I get back up again, I pop up like those football players, not soccer players. They're horrible. Those are horrible <laughs> people, soccer players. They get a little bump with their shoes. They fall down. They're rolling like a limp fish. But football players, you sack some of those guys, they bounce up right away. It's like, mm -hmm. no, I'm not hurt. Dude, your arm is still on the field. 60 yards back there you don't have any legs it's like i'm okay don't take me off don't take me off please don't take me off on a stretcher but soccer players are like he touched me and then you watch the replay and the players are like this far apart and the players fallen right. that's how i think we need to treat ourselves as kind of like football players you get sacked by the enemy you bounce right up again <laughs> almost like what happened and you keep going my brothers and sisters in christ listen a great end time move of god is happening right now and this will only continue for a short amount of time and we as believers working in his vineyard need to capitalize on this great revival taking place right before the rapture resurrection and that is what we're doing here at feed my sheep today we are a faith-based nonprofit that funds christian missions all over the world and we are doing this through our missionaries who are sharing the gospel of grace 1 Corinthians 15 1 through 4 the hope and love of Jesus Christ finished works at the cross for our salvation and they're accomplishing this by preaching the word verbally and also by video presentation many people watch these video presentations of the life of Jesus Christ and him dying on the cross and much more and they immediately come to the faith of believing in the finished works of Jesus Christ for their salvation. This is a very effective tool. And after this is all done, we provide free Bibles to all those who are new believers that joined the body of Christ. And on top of all that, we are also providing these people with free humanitarian relief aid to help ease their suffering situation and you will receive the same reward as our missionaries because now you are partnered with them through Feed My Sheep today. When you financially support 
this cause. Because in 1 Corinthians 3, 8, it says, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Who is the planter? You are when you invest in the Feed My Sheep today, when you plant your seed into this work. Who is the waterer? The missionaries, and everybody that works underneath them, because they use this money and liquidate it and turn it into something that's usable for the kingdom of God like Bibles and humanitarian relief aid. Nothing sits in a bank and collects interest here, everybody. It is turned into something that's usable for the kingdom. So please help to keep your Feed My Sheep today going strong. Here's how. In the description box below, there's a link to our website. It's feedmysheeptoday.org. Go there, you can give by credit card, PayPal, bank draft, or simply send your gift in the mail. You also see the option there to become a monthly sustainer. If you can't give big right now, over a period of time determined by you. We greatly need monthly sustainers because if we have an idea what's coming in the next month, we are then able to plan ahead and make sure we have enough material aid and Bibles on hand in time to go into these areas so that we can be effective. Because of the supposed pandemic, there are delays in getting this stuff now, so we have to be able to order this stuff in advance. So we are definitely looking for new members to join our monthly sustainer family. And don't forget to follow us on our YouTube channel, Feed My Sheep Today, so that way you don't miss out on any of the things happening with the funding coming into this ministry. So thank you all so much for your support. May God bless you all. Right. Well, just uh, you have to ask yourself. You know, the Bible says if uh, he that believeth is not sin, the truth is not in him. Okay. Yeah. So if you're saying to yourself, I'm a dirty, wretched old man. I'm a sinner. I need a savior. You, you're acknowledging that you have sin, that you need a savior, and that you believe in Jesus. Okay. The truth is in you. The Holy Spirit said that means you're saved. I mean, you're saying to yourself, man, I should not be doing this. Yep. I should not be gossiping. I should not be having all this wrath built up in my mind. And every, 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 any, whatever your sin is, no matter how great or small it is, or whatever combination, God's mm -hmm. seen it all. Okay. Yep. He already knows what you're going to do next Wednesday night. Okay. Yep. He knows all this stuff already. Okay. But uh, the, the fact of the matter is, we are not saved by works. And if you go to Romans 117, it says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. faith. Okay? Not live by limiting the amount of sin. Mm -hmm. It's live by faith. And right. Romans 4, 5 says, But to him that worketh not, mm -hmm. but believeth, on yeah. him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Yeah. So there he is again, but to him that worketh not. So yeah. that's basically to the person who trusts in their works, whether he is good at doing good deeds, working at soup kitchens, or he or she is good at staying away from sins for a day or two or three or four, or yeah. however long or however short, doesn't matter. Yeah. The key thing is what God looks for, and the only thing he looks for is your belief. That's the only thing he looks for. And this is why Jesus always made a big deal about great faith. Oh, ye of great faith to that centurion. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and, and all throughout the Bible, oh, man, he got angry when people did not have faith. Yeah. He didn't get angry at their sin. Yeah. He didn't get angry when Peter fled. All right. Yeah. During that time and all that stuff and, and how uh, all the essential, all the apostles fled. But yeah, they abandoned him. They were scared. Yeah. That's yeah. of the flesh. But what yeah. he looks for is faith. So, yeah, you might be dealing with sin. Or let's, let's face it, we're all dealing with sin. Yeah. Okay, we all fall short of the glory of God. Yeah. Okay, whatever combination it is, how much or how little, doesn't matter. Because yeah. God doesn't consider that. Yeah. He considers your faith. Yeah. Now, what about my sin, Bob? But God has to look at my sin. Oh, he did. Oh, he had a really good look at it. It yeah. happened on the cross 2,000 years ago. Yeah. He targeted his own son with death because all your sin was put on him yeah. at the cross. God just targeted his own son and came at him with everything he had. And whoosh, 
Yeah. He died. All right. And he paid the price for all of us. He saw all of my sin there, all your sin there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All at once, past, present, and future. Your whole timeline is clean. Yeah. Okay. And that's the key thing. You must have a clean timeline for your whole life. And it's yeah. only possible by belief in the finished works of Jesus Christ, because that's the only thing yeah. God accepts. Yeah. Yep. You can't, I don't care how many times you say you're sorry. Yeah. I don't care how many works or things or throw ashes on your head or <laughs> try to go find a pure lamb. That'd be animal cruelty. You go to prison for that. It's the reason why you can't do that no more. <laughs> the only way that God gave us to him is through his son. This is why Jesus said, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. Yeah. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, for sure. And it's it's interesting that uh when you think about in Romans, again, I would encourage anyone to just go through it. I I wasn't nobody told me, hey Shane, read the book of Romans every day for 30 days, give it a try, or your money back. Nobody's ever said that to me. <laughs> but I'm I'm saying to people out there, my audience, I'm saying try it. Try reading the book of Romans as best as you can every day for like read the entire 16 chapters. It used to take me an hour and a half a day to read it. Now I got it down to about 30, 40 minutes. Done, 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 done. Mm -hmm. Try that for, for 30 days. And what you're going to come across is a couple of amazing verses. But one of them that really jumped out at, at me is the fact that God, the father, justifies us because of what his son jesus christ did on the cross he justifies us for that and now that he justifies us based on what his son did not what we did and passed all judgment to his son so jesus christ is the ultimate judge of the universe and he's not judging his church and we're sealed by the holy spirit you have three for three on your side now you have god the father god the son god the holy spirit on your side who can be against you like really mm -hmm. who can separate you from that love if god's on your side who's gonna do it angels no nothing so once you realize that that god the father is on our side and he's not up there smashing us with a hammer and Jesus Christ isn't judging his body, his flesh, his bones. And we're sealed by the Holy Spirit until that day of redemption. What are we talking about here, folks? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, once you get saved, you are not working for salvation. That's a gift. Yep. Okay. But there are works yep. that God would prefer you do. You yep. don't have to, but he hopes that yep. you would do work. And yeah. go to John 6, 28 and 29, it says, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe mm -hmm. on him who he has sent. Mm -hmm. That's the work of God, mm -hmm. okay? That you believe on him, yeah. believe in Jesus, all right? Yeah. So that's that, that, that faith. It's like the greatest thing that God looks for. Sure, sharing the gospel with somebody yeah. is great. Yeah. Handing out a Bible, handing out blankets, giving yeah. somebody some of the water to drink, all yeah. these good deeds is great. But the one work that God's going to look for and he's going to reward you greatly for is faith yeah. in Jesus yeah. and his work that he did for us at the cross. Yeah. Okay. A lot of yeah. people don't realize that. You go to the beam and say, I'm not going to get nothing. I hardly did anything. He, Jesus, I got this gigantic reward for you because you just had faith. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's a huge reward. Yeah. All right. I don't think anybody's going to be empty handed at the beam of seat, Shane. Yeah, I agree. And I think what's, what's interesting too along that line is there are some things that we won't carry over into eternity. One of those is hope because mm -hmm. right now we don't see Christ today like physically we don't see him we don't hear him audibly but we believe and we are so blessed like the maximum amount of being blessed is when you believe when you don't see that is that is so pleasing to god the father when you believe in his son and we don't see him and the highest point is when there's nothing happening in your life 
and you still believe. There's no emotions. You're not at a concert. You're not coming back from a huge retreat, all this kind of stuff. You're just like, you know what? I just, I, I just believe and I love the Lord so much and there's nothing going on around you. And maybe if it's even contrast, maybe it's getting bad around you, but you still have that faith. When you get to heaven, you're not speaking in tongues. You're not, you're not exercising your faith, hope, prophecies are gone. All that stuff, all those spiritual gifts that you're desiring and wanting, gone gone in eternity so you can't go back and go okay now i i speak this language or now i i'm prophesying no because you're gonna now see things clear and now like you said now you get the rewards of what we're doing here today for our faith because that's mm -hmm. a gift right now like it's gonna be like when you think about it again when you cross over into eternity there's nothing, you'll probably be kicking yourself. Why didn't I just have a little bit more faith back then? Why didn't I just have a little bit more belief that Jesus Christ really died for me, really existed, and really is taking care of all of my needs? You're going to be looking backwards going, oh, man, maybe that's where the tears come from. Tears of, man, I had so much potential and I didn't even realize it. God had so many things for me. And I just squandered them. I think that's more the regrets, if you will. Like, oh, man, I didn't realize it. I didn't realize I had everything. 